Welcome back. If you're just joining us, it's Daybreak on Trust Television, and it's that segment where we bring you um, select national newspapers and the stories that made it to the front page. We'll begin, as usual, with the Daily Trust. The Daily Trust is firing from a different cylinder this morning. CNG, no conversion centers in 27 states. Um, high cost, FS crisis, slow adoption. Owners of 15.5 million vehicles in Dilemma and FG partners are gone to reach 774 local government. You'll find the details of this story on page four, and you'll find the illustration of a gas powered car refilling at a gas station in Jabi, local government. Basically, um, there are about nine states plus the FCT, eight states plus the FCT that can boast of a CNG conversion center. Well, as we you, speak. you look at the, the scale most, of the problem, right? And you cons and you weigh it against the scale of the solution. You realize that the problem outweighs the solution. Absolutely outweighs the and solution. And shouldn't we have thought about doing this first before saying subsidy is gone? For and all of, this is what uh, most people have said. Uh, no doubt, CNG provides a lot of potentials and for cost reduction. Uh, you know, for the average Nigerian, but we are basically not there, and it doesn't seem like we will be there in another one year considering what it will take to deploy this, you cannot be talking about a rapid adoption and there is a heavy tax body on the importation of CNG materials in Nigeria. So, uh, you know, that speaks to what needs to be done. We move on to other stories that made it to the front page. Kanu Governor to sign an amended Emirate Bill as Assembly passes law today. That's big. Really big, if you understand the various dimensions to those issues. No way Ireland, Spain to recognize Palestine states from May 28th. And why Tinibu first year anniversary is low key? I don't understand what they mean by low key. I think it's self explanatory. There's nothing to celebrate All at right. this moment. Uh, I mean, and, and how do you even celebrate in the face of the, the level of hardship yeah. that you are enduring? It would be rather insensitive. That's right. Zamfara lawmakers adopted daughters rescued after 17 months. <sighs> it's, it's better late than never. Uh, Murik Hills hijab victory in a bad court. Chai's bank post 11 billion profit before tax for a full year 2023. And the Vision College clears air on capacity constraints. You remember that lead story? Um, yeah. And by the way, I was talking, a friend was talking to me about, you know, plans to go to, you know, the aviation uh, school. And then the conversation is that, you know, you go there, there's so many constraints, you can't finish. You know, it's like... It's not working. It's completely dysfunctional. It's there. It's not there. Yeah. This is the one inquiry, right? Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, the one the inquiry is, is, is a private one yeah. uh, that was commissioned by the former Senate president. Right. But they are now asking that the federal government take them over. So it shows wow. you clearly yeah. how difficult it has working. been for them to... Okay. So let's quickly take a look at the front page of the Guardian newspaper for today. The Guardian for today. Here are some of the stories. 18-year-old construction work from 9 billion back in 2006 abandoned national library to cost over 200 billion talk about money under the drain hmm. uh you can see a picture of the building there and you talk about waste this is the height of it for me while in other news more on that on page six by the way cbn reduces duty uh, fx rate uh, eight time in may as nara trades above 1500 nara to the dollar Lagos Correctional Centers uh, overstretched by 104%, according to the government. INEC knocks state independent electoral commissions, likens council polls to coronation of candidates. I mean, we're just talking about the local councils. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, the INEC chairman uh, yesterday met with um, some stakeholders, and I believe this is where this story is coming from. First year in office, federal government eyes low key ceremony gives Tinubu pass mark. Wait, I mean, that's who is federal government and who is the student again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Guess what? I guess if every student has an opportunity to mark his trip, guess who is not going to fail? That student. Absolutely. Uh, Nigeria's uh, gemstones exports hit $15.2 million, securing 30th place globally. And how about this one? Back in the news. Uh, and battle Super Cup. Abakiari gets bail after 27 months in detention. By the way, to enable him, um, you know, give his mother a befitting burial. 
His mother died a while ago, actually. Yes. Yeah. So, this is rather belated. Well, a barrier right? yeah. befit, uh, yeah. to complete the mother's barrier, yeah. right? This, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, federal government says negotiation for minimum wage, not living wage, uh, offers 57,000 now. So, we got an extra 3,000, a whole 3,000 uh, uh, to boost the offer. Tinubu Obasanjo seek regional integration to deepen democracy. These are some of the stories you can follow on the Guardian newspaper for today. All right, we'll move on to the Vanguard. And um, the Vanguard newspaper this morning, uh, it's leading with a story around minimum wage talks. It said labor cuts demands to 497K or 1,000. Mm. Um, FG, organized private sector, offers 57. You know, um, that's as far as the conversation around the minimum wage is concerned. But there's an interesting part to the stories on the front page, which is on uh, the Europa League final where Ademola Oh, my Lukos God. I never to... saw that coming. No, I didn't. I Leverkusen didn't. losing in that grand fashion and you Ademola know, Lukman I, I having, like, I mean, the most memorable... To think of how Leverkusen arrived at that final, yeah. having not lost a single match mm. the entire season. Mm. And we had more Nigerian players on the Leverkusen yeah. side, so I thought the Mary would be more on the other side. But I, I actually, <laughs> I, I, I celebrated Lukman only for me to remember at the end of my celebration uh, that uh, Victor, Victor Boniface on the other side. was on the and other side. Also Teller on the yeah, other Teller side. Yeah, also. But, yeah. Um, but uh, Lukman and, deserves it. Yes. He's been you know, one of the most yeah, outstanding and, and players. And this is charging up the conversation around who becomes the next African footballer of the year. Mm. He had a very good outing a at the half season. Yeah. You know, um, and he was instrumental to their getting to the final. He crowned it up all yeah. with, with a super performance. Yeah. Um, what a way, you know, to be part of a final. Mm. Shatima, Kadoso, Oye, others discussed Nigeria's economy today, and I'm sure that will be at the Vanguard annual uh, lecture series. Mm. Uh, I'm sure we will also be looking to bring you all of the major happenings from there. Solutions, too bad. Uh, to bad government. governance in Africa is small democracy, and that's coming from our own president, uh, President yeah. Tinubu Obasake signs 40 billion um, 40, Obasake signs 40 billion, I'm, I'm not sure I can get Yeah, 40.4 billion uh, revised 2024 the, budget Yeah, okay, law. for the states yeah. Um, it's, it's just, nice it's just the fourth month in the year. And, it's and nice to know that my eyesight is sharper than yours. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure you. which is uh, <laughs> the fault, whether it's my glasses or, you know. Yeah. Uh, no, mm. definitely. Uh, this eyes have taken it. Nigeria has happened to my eyesight. Yeah. Uh, but these are the major, some of the major stories on the front page mm. of the Vanguard this morning. Uh, we now have joining us in the studio uh, one of our visitors who come in and out <laughs> once in a while. Uh, you have to explain that we tactically dragged him into the studio. Yeah, basically that is what it is. Uh, <laughs> that is what it is. The former editor-in-chief of the news agency of Nigeria, now member of the editorial board of the Daily Trust. My name Yusuf Zango. It's a pleasure to have you join us this morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you very I'm much. I'm being uh, careful because I want uh, to grow old. Tactical effort, uh, <laughs> blackmail me into coming yes, to, exactly. to the studio. Uh, yeah. uh, we, I'll leave it for another day. Yeah. We'll discuss that after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank you for finding time to be here. Uh, we have denied you some extra sleep, which yeah, you okay. more than meritoriously okay. deserve after giving this nation the better part of of your time. Uh, I mean, and you're still doing this in the service of the nation. Uh, so what a way to bring you back into the studio. Thank you. All right, we begin with the Daily Trust. And the story is centered around the CNG. Tomorrow, I think, or is it tomorrow or the 27th, yeah, the, the 27th. federal government presidential initiative would um, be launching whatever it is they want to tell us about the success of their deployment as it were. But, you know, our own direct um, market intelligence is showing us that 27 out of 36 states right now as we speak have no conversion centers and um, the 15.5 million vehicles we are talking about are even the registered vehicles yeah. and you have the equivalent of that number yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. not registered. registered so you are talking about a bigger dilemma D does it appear that we are paying lip service to the whole conversation around the CNG. Yeah, uh, naturally, one is bound to think along that line because uh, this in, didn't start just uh, one year or eight months ago mm -hmm. with the advent of this administration. You remember even during the Buhari administration, there was something like that. And uh, 
I can remember vividly the then uh, uh, Petroleum Minister Silva was uh, saying that it will cost us 300,000 Naira to convert. Mm. And uh, we are even saying that it was too much. Now, I think from what you are our uh, story was saying is uh, 1.5 million, mm -hmm. and this uh, circumstance—I don't know how many Nigerians can afford that. And uh, it's something that uh, really, when you think deeply about it, because uh, we have been talking about uh, removing subsidy long time ago. Number one, number two, we have been talking about climate change. All these are issues which should have moved us uh, to uh, go along this uh, CNG, but we didn't bother. Mm. And even when we raise the issue, we just raise it like, uh, okay, we are going to do it, then we. Yeah. So uh, even when this government came in with the removal of subsidy, it looks like they didn't do any deep thinking. Mm -hmm. Their major concern is how to, uh, to make us keep quiet for a moment, at least uh, say that, look, we are doing something for you in the alternative of this uh, removal of uh, subsidy. subsidy. Apparently, you know, it, you know, from this story, it looks like uh, it has backfired on the mm -hmm. part of the government. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they are going to launch on uh, May 27, uh, because uh, with they only... For the state where they are, yeah, they are with only nine states. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and even in the nine states, some, uh, Quara has just one. Mm -hmm. And it's even under construction, so yeah. I don't know. So, really so of is, for, I, mean, for the I know months. when it comes to government, 80% of everything that they're doing is work in progress, all right? Mm, but yeah. does this signpost, in your view, um, that we're, we're moving the needle, we're getting there? Does, no, does this look like progress? No, it doesn't, because uh, there is no th it doesn't give you anything uh, that's a zero thinking towards that. Mm -hmm. Because for now, uh, it's the government that's uh, pushing it and saying that it's going to do it. I remember the last time this uh, uh, downstream sector authority mm -hmm. called it, they were even asking the uh, Major marketers. petroleum marketers to key into it. They said, well, how can we? Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, we discussed the other day, it's just a market-driven something. If there are people who, can, who will demand the CNG, the petrol marketers will go in. Right. You know, it's, it's a normal uh, economic uh, uh, theory, you yeah. see, demand and supply. If there is a demand, definitely people will spring up and uh, uh, make sure that uh, they supply the product. But for now, there, it gives you an impression that there is no th zero thought yeah. along this line. But there is a lot of lip service about it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, the so thing is just to say, okay, the president has announced it, so we are going to say that he has done well about it, but uh, nothing has been done so far. All right. Um, the other story on the front page of the Daily Trust is, is talking about uh, the Tinubu's uh, first year anniversary, and um, the secretary to the government of the Federation is saying it is going to be low key. Uh, yeah, naturally, it, it will be low. Key. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, if the government uh, decides to uh, make it uh, to make a hype out of it, I don't think. Uh, 90% uh, of Nigerians will even bother about it. But there's also a, a, a side of it. Uh, during mm. the uh, briefing yesterday, the Minister of National uh, Information and National Orientation was talking about how the president has directed his 47 ministers to go out to there showcase. and showcase their scorecard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I don't what know. are we likely going to see? Because it's... No, um, that we don't already know. Yeah, yeah. That, that we don't yeah, already know. Yeah, but uh, they say good product doesn't need advertising. Mm. Right. So, <laughs> uh, even if you should kiss, it will, the problem is that uh, uh, we, 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 we concentrate so much on propaganda. Mm. The reality is on the ground. Everybody knows it. So, you don't need even to tell me mm. what you do before I know. Uh, you remember when uh, the, uh, the administration came in, the first move by the interior minister received accolade, mm -hmm. you know, changing how long it will take Passports, you to take yeah. password. So you, who do you need to, to showcase that for him? Mm. So there are so many Maybe remind like, Nigerians about some of the successes? Well, uh, we need to uh, need remind, uh, because uh, it will be there. Mm. Because... Uh, largely, the government is supposed to provide a service, isn't it? So if you are providing that service, either me, you, or somebody else will go for that service. So do, do, do I need any reminder from you? You know, considering this current cost of living crisis, um, how, how measured do you think the president's remarks should be around 
this one. Uh, 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 well, you want me to be here? So. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has a uh, special advice to do that. Mm. But I, I, I think uh, it's for him to reflect uh, really mm. on uh, the situations uh, uh, Nigerians are in and uh, really try to reflect. He has been saying it that he really is, so he understands our problem. But the unfortunate thing is that uh, uh, every day the government seems not to uh, be keeping to that understanding. Mm. You know, uh, just we have finished with the cyber security levy. Mm. They, it was uh, they were forced to withdraw to suspend it, as they say. So I, I would expect the president really to to come out to show really he understands uh, what Nigerians are uh, going uh, through. All right. Um, I think Kano. Should, Kano. It's, yeah, it's exactly. Exactly. Kano. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. It really is sad to me. Mm. Uh, in the sense that uh, Kano is a leading state. Uh, uh, when you talk of uh, commerce, economy, and everything, uh, once you remove Lagos, is Kano. But unfortunately, in the, in the last 25 years, Kano is just politics, mm. not the economy. Mm. And uh, it just uh, is a state that will show, will lead the way, at least for the northern states. Mm. Unfortunately, it's, uh, and uh, this thing, what does it translate to the ordinary kind of citizen? And uh, instead of them to the leadership to turn the minds of the citizen into productivity, uh, how to grow the economy, all that you have is politics building flyover politics, mm -hmm. providing <laughs> school mm -hmm. politics. Everything has been turned into politics. Yeah. And this one, uh, you have removed this area. Does it matter to the ordinary did, kind did of... we not see this so coming? Uh, I mean, a lot of people will say it, was, it, it, it starts with uh, you know, the Gandhuja administration. Mm -hmm. It's management of the conflict between it and the 14th area of, of Kano. Uh, uh, and now with the advent of the NNPP administration under Abba Kabir Yusuf, that we saw this coming, didn't we? From a mile away, from even before the elections were won and lost. Yes, it is. But uh, for me, the present administration should have looked at the... Is that the most important thing to do? Is this righting a wrong, in your view, or is this just mo no, it, muddling it, it the just, waters? it's just muddling the waters. Mm. Because if tomorrow somebody comes in who is opposed to this, mm. and, you know, the politics in Kano is so... Uh, divided that somebody will come in tomorrow and say, "Look, I also want to reverse this." Mm -hmm. But that's exactly what mm -hmm. it will ha may happen. If uh, suppose mm -hmm. a APC wins tomorrow, and you can't rule out that you don't know tomorrow, mm -hmm. so what will happen? If if they leave, uh, supposedly they bring him back as uh, Lucy, yeah. and uh, he stays there until another APC comes. Even if the APC government leaves him. You don't know. You mm. see, the relationship has been modeled. Mm. But the most important thing to me is that Kano shouldn't be going that way. Mm. We should be more. Uh, the, uh, the leadership should be more focused on what progress they can bring to Kano. Mm. All right. On the international scene, one area where you have played quite yeah. significantly during your active days. Well, is it fair to say active days? You're still in active service. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Norway, yeah. Ireland, Spain recognize Palestinian states uh, from May 20. Yeah, Nigeria yeah. has also supported the two-state solution. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, a, it's a good development given what happened uh, just uh, a week ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, there were attempts uh, at the UN to admit uh, the Palestine and uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, exercises mm -hmm. of power. And I think uh, by these are prominent uh, countries in, the, in Europe. Mm -hmm. it's not, they are not African countries mm -hmm. or Arab countries whom uh, they can dismiss anyhow. Yeah. And uh, I learned even the French, uh, France uh, yeah. is uh, even same. supporting you. So we, we, we see this. It's just uh, what I think is that it's, uh, it's time for the U.S. and other key supporters of Israel to tell uh, Netanyahu, look, soft, soft pedal, let's mm -hmm. look at Because this war is not going to solve his solution. Right. Because if you kill a, a Palestinian, mm -hmm. another one will come up. And uh, the anger is there. Because mm -hmm. for somebody who you have killed his father, his mother, his siblings, 
how would he love you? you know, mm -hmm. Forever he will not. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you look at the complexity of the issue with regards to what's happening at the ICC, for instance. I mean, although this recognition is largely symbolic, but it does send a message, isn't it? Does, it does, it does. That this Palestinian cause yeah. is now a global movement, yeah, so to speak. Uh, yeah. What is your prognosis on how this whole thing ends? Because for so many people, is how do we bring this whole you know, distasteful development to an end? How do you see this ending? Especially given that, you know, Israel is doubling down on the fact that, listen, uh, this is the last time we want to have this encounter with Hamas. This is, this is the end of it. We want to wipe out Hamas, even though it's costing a lot more than, you know, it's, it's war against Hamas, for instance. Well, I, I think the, the, the solution uh, lies uh, with the U.S. Uh, as long as the U.S. Uh, takes uh, side and uh, it's a principal peace broker. Uh, you remember even during uh, uh, Trump, mm -hmm. he brought in the Saudis and everybody mm -hmm. and said, okay, the Saudis even recognize yeah. Israel. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, the U.S. has a role too, but unfortunately the U.S. is not uh, playing a good role mm -hmm. and uh, it has uh, um, wasted the opportunity because uh, it would be difficult for the Palestinians to trust uh, U.S. anymore. Interesting. Uh, what a way to end this conversation. And I'm sure if we were to carry out any kind of survey, um, our audience would be saying, we want him back in the studio again. But that's not me uh, predicting. I'm not promising anything. We know who to call when we want to see him. It's better not to promise. All right. That's right. We're not movie. promising, but it could happen again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for finding yeah, time to be here. Uh, and to share your deep uh, insight around these issues home and abroad yeah. with our viewers back home. And that's the much that we can accommodate this morning on Daybreak. I hope we have brought you information. We have brought you entertainment, but more importantly, uh, we have made your day worthwhile. And thank you for giving us free access to your living room. I'm Sunday Michael Ogu. We will do this again tomorrow. Thank you most timely for most kindly for your time and company. We'll be back tomorrow as always, live at eight. Until then, it's good morning from me and the rest of the team. Stand by for 360 Sports coming up at the top of the hour. Good morning. <laughs>